He worked in the A's front office for 15 years, between the years of 1980 and 1994. He has been a business and sports executive for a long time throughout his career. And now again, teaming up on this book, Goodbye Oakland, joining us this morning on the show is Andy Dolich. Andy, good morning. Good morning to you, and I got to toast you for the 14-minute piece you did on the Oakland A's. I've sent it out to my friends, and it was absolutely perfect, right on, right tone to John Fisher, who has self-inflicted this disaster in Oakland. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I, I'd like to know, nationally, I think there's this drumbeat of nobody goes to the A's games. They should move to Vegas and fix this whole mess. Why my whole sentiment has been, I think that's misguided. Why do you believe that that narrative is misguided? Because when we took over, uh, Walter Haas, he owned a pants company called Levi's. You remember them? I've heard of uh, it. Yeah. Um, so he, he bought the Oakland A's from Charlie Finley in 1980 for 11.2 million bucks. Wow. There's a whole bunch of crappy second basemen that make more than that now. We don't even know their names. And at that time, uh, Finley had destroyed the team, sold everybody off. And remember, here's a team that won three consecutive World Series uh, with some of the greatest players in baseball. In 79, they drew 326,000 people. Wow. Then he hires uh, Billy Martin, brings them back to Berkeley. They go up to 800,000. With simple marketing, with extending the marketplace to understand that it was Northern California, not just Oakland, we got to 2-2, two, 2-5, two, 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 and th close to 3 million. So when people tell me they can't draw anybody, this is self-inflicted crap. And he's gotten rid of all the players. They do no outside marketing. And good luck when you're in uh, Neonville, when it's 115 degrees and you're playing for five years in the Aviator Stadium. I don't think so. There's also this narrative that the A's would like to send out there that there's no money in Oakland, that the money is in Vegas. And Major League Baseball has suggested this as well, that if we go to Vegas, there's more money, they can be more competitive. That also feels to me to be a bizarre concept considering how much money is in the Bay Area. What about the potential revenue that if the A's were to be winners again, they would get in that area of the country? There's no doubt about it. You're going to leave the sixth richest market in the United States to the 38th. Yeah, there's a lot of money in Vegas. It's on the table and it goes to the casinos. You know, tell me the kind of tech businesses you have in Vegas. Uh, Vegas is a nine to five town. People go to work at 9 p.m. and they get off at 5 a.m. That is not the case in the Bay Area. And we always looked at the Bay Area as north of Sacramento, south of Salinas, Monterey, and east to the Nevada border. And we proved that you could draw fans. And when people talk about, oh, it's a small two market place, that's BS too, because many years in the mid eighties to early nineties, Damon, the A's and the Giants outdrew the marketplace. We outdrew 6 million combined. And if you look at, as you said, all the corporate support and the money, John Fisher's owned this team for 18 years, which you pointed out. He has never once been on the DA show or any other show in the history of sports. He's never talked to the public. What owner does that? Andy Dolich spent 15 years inside the A's organization. He has co-authored a book called Goodbye Oakland, talking about this potential move to the Las Vegas market. The John Fisher part of this is maddening because – he inherited all of his billions of dollars. He never worked for that. Mommy and daddy gave him the gap and the gap wealth. He bought this franchise and now has driven it into the ground and wants to move it. And yet there are billionaires out there that want to buy it to keep it in the market like Lacob. So why is John Fisher running a business openly combative with its customers and still also won't sell despite being in the middle of this maelstrom of political and, and social uh, chaos. Well, his Bermuda Triangle cruise on the SS, you know, uh, you know, Bermuda Triangle, they've tried to build, I think they're now up to five stadiums. And Dave Cavill, the team president, has said, 
hey, get excited. We'll be playing our first game in 2027. We don't live in a world that way. We live in a world of what are you doing in five minutes? Um, John Fisher is looking at one simple play, DA, and that is net asset appreciation. He bought it for 180. It's valued by Forbes, et cetera, at 1.5, 1.5 billion. If he cuts a deal in Vegas and they really get traction and start to build, his net asset value probably doubles. And then he can sell and go, what a smart boy am I? I just think this is nothing more than a net asset valuation play, but there's a gap in his thinking. And that is a long way to go before Vegas and he's got a partner in this, DA, and you talked about it. His name is Commissioner Rob Manfred. Um, aren't you supposed to be looking at two expansion markets for MLB at $2.2 billion once Tampa and Oakland have their situations with a ballpark taken care of? Uh, why would you take Vegas off the board as a possible expansion market and let them go there? And you also were going to charge them $500 million for Relo, but you pulled that off the table. That's the mystery in this DA that I just don't get. And you're talking about value asset and whether it would go up, the valuation of this. And of course it would go up with a new ballpark in Las Vegas. But wouldn't that value go up even more with a new ballpark in Oakland if you remain in a wealthier market and a larger television market? Why wouldn't his whole modus operandi be getting the new ballpark done somewhere in Oakland? Dave, and your economic expertise was probably developed in a place like Warwick, New York, I'm guessing, <laughs> as you grew up. Yeah, uh, at the five and dime. Greatest, yeah. Some of the greatest economists in the world came out of Warwick. And, and if I can just <laughs> say this, we we grew up only 67 miles apart. I'm a I'm a Valley Stream, Long Island oh, okay. kind of guy. All right. So when I saw only 67 miles, and then I was looking for famous people in Warwick, New York. Yeah. And you're it. Nothing against Warwick. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, Hakeem was born there, right? Hakeem Warwick was born there. <laughs> you know, uh, different Warwick. <laughs> Dion, anyway, Dion is not from there either. <laughs> yes. Okay. So anyway, uh, your point about the money in the Bay Area is absolutely there. And in that time period that John Fisher's on the team, just in the last six or seven years, you got Levi's Stadium selling out for the Niners. You got a beautiful Chase Center uh, self-financed by uh, Joe Lacob and Peter Goober. You have the Golden One Center and the Miracle of the Sacramento Kings this year. Um, John Fisher hasn't been able to have a strategy and he hasn't spent his own money, which is supposedly $3 billion. So this is ongoing confusion. And I give the A's fans a ton of credit because they have literally boycotted John Fisher. Those millions of people, 78 million people have come through the turnstiles to see the A's play since they moved to Oakland. So you can't tell me there's no fan avidity. You can't tell me there's no corporate money. It's there, but the fans have said, you want us to pay you when you're giving us the middle digit for the last few years? You know, we're the Bay Area. We ain't dumb. We're not doing that. It's one of the great cons of all time, which is why I'm so passionate about this. The idea that Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred and John Fisher are selling that there's no fans in Oakland. We're poor in Oakland. You can't get a stadium in Oakland. Nobody goes anyway. And all the money's in Vegas. And I see this on social media from people outside of Oakland saying, move it, move to Vegas. We're rich in Vegas. We've got all these successful teams in Vegas. Look at the Raiders. Look at the, look, why did, why is Oakland losing all their teams? And I'm like, you're falling for the con. The average median household price in Oakland is $830,000. The average median house uh, on sale, real estate for sale uh, in Vegas is $390,000. Now, of course, taxes factor into that, et cetera. But if, if the average house sells for eight hundred grand in Oakland, there's plenty of money in Oakland. I, I just People, yes. I don't understand how the narrative keeps getting pushed that there's no fans, as you said, and there's no money in the Bay Area. 81 baseball games in a domed slash doomed stadium in Neonville. OK, if I'm in Buffalo, I'm going to a Raiders game when it's 20 degrees and four feet of snow on the ground for a weekend. We're having fun. Uh, it's the Cleveland Guardians against the whatever they're going to be called in Oakland. 
on a weekday uh, day game. How many people are going to be at that game if both teams suck? Good and, luck to you. And, and people are comparing this to the Raiders. Well, 75% of the games that are sold out that have been sold out at Allegiant Stadium have been road fans. The Niners fans right. have showed up. The Chiefs fans have showed up. That's not going to be the same for baseball. And also Absolutely the economics not. of football is much different. You don't need regional television rights and a television audience to flesh out your money. It's all a national TV product. In baseball, you need the local television deal, which is market 10 versus Vegas is market 40. You would just never move a business from the 10th largest city to the 40th largest city and expect to make more money. And yet baseball somehow is trying to convince us that that makes sense. What we were able to have through Walter Haas, a gentleman named Cornell Meyer, who ran Kaiser Aluminum and Chemical, quality mayor, uh, community leaders, and major corporate uh, decision makers, was really three things, DA, teamwork, leadership, and trust. And in the Oakland situation right now, you have none of them. You have a weak government in the city. You have uh, a man in John Fisher that's playing his own game and not talking about it. And you have Rob Manfred that is colluding with him to get this team out of the market to a place that he should hold for an expansion market. Very confusing. Andy Dolich spent 15 years inside the A's organization amongst many decades in the sports business and front office realm. 1980 to 1994, some of the great years. He has seen it be great in Oakland. He knows it can happen again with the right leadership, which they do not have right now. The book is Goodbye Oakland. I highly suggest a purchase and a read of this. Great for Father's Day, Mother's Day coming up. And Andy teamed with Dave Newhouse, who's an excellent Bay Area sports writer for many, many years as well on this book. So certainly check it out. And, and Andy, as this unfolds, I'd love to have you back on the show. I mean, anybody that can actually, you know, cite my hometown means a lot to me. So thanks so much for doing the homework. And thanks so much for joining us today. DA, I look forward to it because we're walking here, right? We're walking here. We're walking here. We're walking here. Thanks, <laughs> Thank Andy. Thank you. You got it. Andy Dolich joining us this morning. <laughs>